Ah, Tale Concerto, one of the truly overlooked and underplayed gems of the PlayStation 1, Saturn, and Nintendo 64 generation of consoles. Published in 1998 in Japan by Bandai and 1999 in North America by Atlas, the game failed to garner much attention despite receiving decent critical praise at the time. Perhaps the reason was due to competition from other big projects within the same release window, such as the new Sega Dreamcast or the blockbuster RPG Final Fantasy VIII. Maybe it was a lack of marketing or the shifting attitudes of gamers favoring more realistic games over ones perceived as kiddie, especially regarding fans of the PS1. Whatever it was, Tale Concerto quickly faded into obscurity. The game was developed by CyberConnect2, who is probably most commonly associated with their work on the faux online RPG series Dot Hack on the PlayStation 2, and character designs were done by Nobuteru Yuki, who has worked on many popular animation series and some video games, including Chrono Cross, one of my all time favorite games. Oh, oh, Chrono Cross, oh, how I love you. The story follows Waffle Rybread, a dog cop who finds himself reluctantly assigned to capture the all-cat members of the aptly named Black Cats game. Uh, this all takes place in Prairie, a kingdom composed of various islands that float above the remnants of an older civilization, from which the dog and cat people trace their ancestry. While working on the case, he discovers a plot involving ancient technology, revenge and greed, and the possible destruction of the Prairie Kingdom. That's the background of the game, but in this age of high-def, ultra-realistic gaming, is Tale Concerto still worth playing? Let's take a look at the good, the bad, and the meh, and find out. So the good, uh, the good things about the game. Uh, the first thing you'll notice from the images and video of the game are the vibrant color scheme and the cutesy art style of the characters and game environment. Yes, Tale Concerto paints one charming fantasy world, but that charm doesn't just end with the aesthetics. The locales, cast of characters, and lore of the game truly are memorable and imaginative. A nation of floating islands, airships, steampunk elements, a lost civilization on the planet's surface. These are all pretty interesting elements to have in a game. The anthropomorphic cast is also fun and lovable enough to warm even some of the most ice-cold gamers' hearts, right? I think so. And since this is a game dealing with animal people, I just want to get this out of the way before you scream out that the game looks like cheap fodder for the furry community. Uh, please keep in mind that this game was originally released in 1998, and while there was a strong furry subculture at that point, somewhere, it was nowhere near as commonly known and practiced as it is now in our internet dominated world. Most of us gamers back then got our information from gaming magazines, and furries didn't tend to write letters to the editor. I'd never even heard of the term furry until the 2000s. So anyway, going back to the cast, while the character archetypes are far from original, it's a nice and varied mix that leads to many funny bits of dialogue and situations. Prepare to meet your maker! <laughs> There's Waffle, the always positive but hopelessly naive young hero. He's kind of vanilla, but endearing. There are the main antagonists, the Pris sisters. Flair, who is cute and the baby of the trio. Stare, the serious and practical one. And Alicia, uh, she's the short-tempered, unyielding leader of the group who has a rocky relationship with Waffle. Yeah, she basically has a huge crush on him. Opposites attract, even in dog and cat world, I guess. Aside from them, there's Princess Teria, the beautiful, standard, generic princess with a strong will, Cyan, a sort of helpless rival to Waffle, a real antagonist, and then there's this guy. Panta, the police dog, who acts as a sidekick but is completely ineffectual, except for showing up to help you save the game before boss fights. I'm jealous of your way with a ladies officer, Waffle. Oh, I wish I was as tall as you! Yep, keep on keeping on, Panta. Another thing you've probably noticed from this video or other videos of Tale Concerto is its soundtrack. And what a beautiful soundtrack it is.
the music fits the wondrous and whimsical mood of the game's story, and I think it may be the best single element from the game. Whether you're tackling a Black Cat's game mega boss, flying around from locale to locale on the world map, or just taking a stroll through town, the game's music puts you in the right mood to tackle whatever lies in your way. Those are the main things I really liked about the game, but there are other positive points as well. Tail Concerto supports analog control, which is nice for a 3D game, since so many games before it relied on the standard D-pad of the original non-dual analog, non-dual shock controller. I really like the Airleaf Islands portion of the game, as it gave you a nice sense of flight, and it was the only real part of the game that felt open. And finally, the police robo is cool. Grab those kittens! Shoot those bubbles! Twirl those arms! Twirl those arms! Break that random stranger's furniture. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the last thing I'll mention is the positive, fun-loving vibes the game gives the player. Even in the darkest of times, the characters are all cheery, the mood is happy, and everything is hunky-dory. No one even dies in the game. You either capture enemies, which are mostly kittens, cute, adorable, bad kittens, or blow up the odd machine here and there. When you defeat a boss, your foes escape Saturday morning cartoon style every time. It may be too happy and cutesy for its own good sometimes, but it's so nice and refreshing to play a game like this in today's game environment, where so many of our popular games consist almost practically of killing everything in sight. Those are what I felt are the good aspects of the game. Now let's talk about the not so good parts. A few of the things that don't really bring the overall experience of the game down so much but are worth pointing out are the graphics, the voice acting, and the limited range of exploration. The PlayStation 1 was not a graphical powerhouse, but a lot of developers were able to get some amazing results from the system, especially in the later years of its life cycle. The game's graphics are, well, they're okay, but like so many 3D games from its generation, they haven't aged too gracefully. Technically, by today's standards, they just aren't pretty to look at, but the art direction of the game took the limitations of the hardware and made some of still rather impressive looking and memorable places. There are some nicely animated FMV movies in the game that help narrate the story, and they look pretty good, but they also have some compression blemishes here and there. Voice acting in the games of the 90s were also pretty synonymous with ear bleeds, and Tail Concerto is no exception. Take a listen to this gem. Are you going to fight me too, Stare? Yes. I don't get it. Why? I want to determine. What are you talking about? Show me your beliefs through your actions. Prepare. But I must say, the voice acting is kind of charming in a way, and fit the characters. Well, maybe except for this one guy. Princess Teria, I'm gonna get in trouble if you walk around unescorted. Yeesh. Alright, Droopy. Right, despite having this wonderful grand world to explore, every location, except for the previously mentioned early violence, is so confined and so restricted. It's a little disappointing in a world so seemingly open and large. Things are reduced to such small places to move around and explore. Those are all pretty minor issues with the game, but there are far larger problems at loom. Tail Concerto suffers from a lot of the same afflictions of similar 3D games of the era, which were clunky controls and a terrible, terrible camera. The movement of the police robo is just so floaty and it takes some time to get used to. I did find that using the D-pad seemed to translate to tighter movement, but as a 3D game, it really is best to use the analog stick. Speaking of analog sticks, it's a shame that the right analog stick is not used at all in this game. It would have been a perfect solution to operating the camera, which at many times works against the player. Apart from a few fixed camera sections of the game, the camera will almost always position itself behind Waffle, and can lead to disorientation and obscure a lot of the action. Tail Concerto is not a difficult game, but struggling between the camera and the controls, there are more than a couple of frustrating moments. 
It is nice, however, that certain objects are highlighted during more difficult to perform jumps, which is something I don't remember happening too often with 3D games of this era. One other major thing about Tail Concerto that bugged me was game progression. It's just too linear and repetitive. Uh, to get to the next level, Waffle usually just gets a message from headquarters or another character about a tip, and the destination is highlighted on the map. You go to said destination, clear out room after room of the level, get to a boss, mission complete, and the whole process repeats itself. Very gamey, which is fine, but it's just that most of the objectives for completing the level are not varied enough. Going through the level consists mostly of capturing kittens to unlock a door or complete a story objective, or light platforming. Next room, rinse, repeat. Sadly, there is no combination of the two, it's really just either or, and uh, that can make certain levels seem more like a chore than interactive entertainment. Oh man! Additionally, there's really nothing to do outside the main game aside from collecting pieces of photographs hidden throughout the world of the prairie. The last and perhaps most glaring problem with the game is its short length, which is only hampered further by the ease at which the game can be completed. Through most of the game, aside from occasionally fighting with the camera and controls, there's really no challenge to be had except for the very last portion of the game, which sees a huge and sudden spike in difficulty regarding both platforming and combat. It sucks. Teo Concerto can be completed in a mere afternoon, clocking in at less than 5 hours, and once you finish the main game, that's all there is. Uh, no new game plus, no free exploration. What you do get is a small epilogue section restricted to Porto, where you can view any pictures you've collected, talk to some people, and check out any of the FMV movies from the game. If you beat the game on hard, you can also listen to all of the game's music, but I haven't done it myself. So that's what I felt about the game, and to answer the question, Tale Concerto for the PlayStation 1, is it still worth playing? Well, yeah, definitely in my opinion. If you've never played it, check it out. Its charm and the general fun to be had far outweigh its data design and technical flaws. It is a little hard to find, but used copies of the game usually go for a fair price. If you have already played it again recently, I would definitely recommend picking up its spiritual successor if you haven't done so. Solo to Robo, Red the Hunter for the Nintendo DS. It was also made by pretty much everyone involved with the original, including the same developer, character designer, and music composers. Teo Concerto's cast all makes appearances in the game as well, and Solo to Robo has all the charm and then some of its predecessor, with very little of the flaws. Overall, it's a longer, better, even more memorable game. It even comes with the soundtrack. Sweet. Pick it up before it becomes too hard to find. I hope you enjoyed this video and it generated some interest in this wonderful but often overlooked game, Tale Concerto, an unsung classic that is definitely still worth playing.